Marcus ready? Okay. Yeah, no, Marcus is going to be joining us this evening. Um, he couldn't make it the first session. Obviously, we know he was working. So, yeah, you just got here. Well, uh, Darren and Marcus have been here for about 45 minutes. They got his character ready. So, uh, he'll be joining us this campaign and for the foreseeable future for the rest of this campaign as well. Yeah. Um, guys, there is beer there. Uh, there's chips. Uh, Dave brought his dip. For his uh, thick chips, I guess you could say, the, uh, his barbecue chicken dip. Oh, so good. Um, we got beer nuts as well. And, uh, yeah, help yourself if you guys don't want to drink beer. There's uh, there's pop upstairs. It's up to you guys. But I just got a few things I got to touch up on here, and we'll get started. I'm spilling all over myself here. I know, right? The campaign hasn't even started. I'm getting a bit tipsy already. Yeah, there's bowls. There's bowls, guys. Help yourself. There's bowls just on the side. Um, put whatever you want in there. Dip, chips, whatever it may be. Just a few touch-ups I gotta do. No, nothing. No big deal. We'll, we'll get started here shortly. Darren, how do you feel about a physical map? Would that be kind of add to the... Okay, we'll go with a physical map. There's sour cream and onion. Very, very good. Ruffles thick chips. You can't beat them. Okay, I think we are... I think we're set. Um, so before we get started, we probably should give Marcus a, a rundown of what he's missed. and Just a rough rundown. Yeah. Okay, so just a quick rundown of what happened in the last session. Obviously, you know, you couldn't make it, so I made it so that I can write you into this uh, session. Uh, but I'll give you a real quick review of what happened. We didn't do much because we spent the first two hours of uh, the night just everyone was doing character creations. And uh, they got their characters. Obviously, we know we have uh, Ashley's got her tiefling fighter, female fighter. Uh, Dave's got his barbarian dwarf, and Darren's got his human cleric. Uh, guys, um, spoiler alert, Marcus, uh, with his roles, he made an ideal ranger. So he picked a human ranger, as there's only one human on this team so far. Um, so th basically, the sum of the story is you, uh, you're a part of a mercenary company. Yeah. Uh, Darren's the leader. We rolled for who the leader was. Darren's the leader of this group. And uh, Dave is like his right-hand man. I know he doesn't like to hear that. <laughs> Dave is like his Tom Sizemore to his Tom Hanks and Saving Private Ryan. Like he's been with him on a bunch of campaigns. They just recently um, picked up Ashley, the tiefling fighter, for this particular mission. And what's happening here is uh, you guys are on a war-torn uh, island of Starkle. Because uh, obviously as mercenary groups, you guys follow um, you guys follow where there's action going on, where there's uh, potential for money to be made. And this is a war-torn island. You guys have very little understanding of what's going on here. Um, but you guys find out very shortly after landing here that there's a war going on and that there is it looks to be an extermination of the lizard folk that are a part of this island for some kind of alchemic reasons there's like dark magic that is being used with uh, the harvesting of these lizard folk so you guys landed in Stargall and they made their way to the center small town which is called Pine Run. Pine Run is... Darren, do we have the map? Oh, we don't have the map, sorry. I printed it out and laminated it and everything. I just... I can't find it. And if you don't have it, we talked about this beforehand. 
Uh, above Pine Run is a bunch of hills and mountains. It's Cool Wind Mountains is what they're called. Um, that, that's going to come into play in this session. Basically in Pine Run, uh, the mayor tasked you guys with going up into Cool Wind Mountains and finding out what is uh, taking villagers away. There's villagers going missing up there. You guys met a drunk uh, Skoden at town center and uh, he claims, whether you believe him or not, because he's, you know, he could be the local bullshitter, he's the local drunk. He claims he's seen something pull somebody away and that it disappeared and then reappeared further away, which gave you guys the impression that this might be a displacer beast. Uh, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. It's not going to be a crazy high level. Obviously, you guys are all uh, lower level characters. Um... So the mayor's tasked you guys with tracking down and killing this thing, but as well, um, probably the biggest uh, in terms of gold to be made, uh, the local priest in the chapel, uh, Jaxel, this guy here, tasked you guys with uh, retrieving a chest that was stolen of a holy relic that's very important to the town folk. Um, town folk had brought it up to you guys and you approached a Jaxel and uh, inquired about this stolen chest and he did indeed tell you guys it's a holy relic that was taken of unimaginable pricelessness. So he's willing to give you guys 100 gold each, which is fucking huge early on this game, in this game, considering you guys all only have about 20 gold each. If you guys can retrieve this chest, um, and he's pretty sure this really fits into this whole Cool Wind Mountain, that Cool Wind Mountain Forest uh, is where these bandits reside. So you guys have that. A local town folk told you that. Um, one of the elves, there is an elf brother and sister that have been in town for quite some time, and the elf the elven sister actually went missing and the elven brother is actually going into Kulin Mountains. This is what a villager told you and uh, he's going to go look for his sister. So now you guys are trying to track this elf down because this elf uh, obviously would know a bit about this area considering he stayed here. How much of Kulin Mountain forced um, he knows about you guys aren't aware but uh, you guys did find out from the local drunk as well that same conversation that this elf is currently uh, in the tavern the local tavern which is called uh, Pine Mirage so Pine Mirage Tavern um, is where you guys are actually just about to enter when this um, this campaign ended when we had to end the session obviously it was late it was like well, one in the morning or something crazy yeah. Okay, so Jackass is going to be joining us as well. Jackass actually uh, did up a character already. Um, and, yeah, he did it yesterday. He couldn't stay, though. He just dropped it off. And it's fair. He, he didn't cheat or anything, I don't think. You guys will meet Jackass's character here right away. Yeah. He'll be joining us next session. Hopefully everyone can make it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's where we are right now. So obviously, um, we're going to start off with you guys entering this tavern. Okay. No, no dice rolls needed and whatnot. This is just purely story. So before we continue on, Marcus... Um, obviously this is different from Darren's campaign. Darren's campaign is a very old school, really open world, whereas mine's kind of a directed story. It's still, you guys have many options, but, and it's a shit show. It's a rated R shit show, so I hope you're ready for that. Yeah. This is actually a dice roller. If you guys want to use it, feel free when it comes time to roll the dice. The top actually comes off. You guys throw the dice in there, and it comes out of the bottom of this, uh, this cavern, that thing that's lit right now, yeah. 
There's another dice tower, obviously, at the other end of the table. Uh, you guys can feel free to use that one as well. It's a little, a little cheaper. This is more stylish. Yeah. Okay. So we're ready to get it, get into the tavern. All right. Let's let's do that. Okay. So you guys open the door to the Pine Mirage Tavern, and as soon as you open the door, the fresh smell. Actually, you know what? Let's get some ambience going here. Uh, I actually had some for you guys. Okay. Yeah, that's a little better. Just to get a little bit of uh, ambience going in the room. I like to keep things uh, very over the top. So as you guys enter this room, uh, this tavern, immediately you get the smell of mead in the air, and there's laughter, and there's people of all races in here. Um, there's a tavern wench that's clearly picking up a chair shards from what obviously was a fight that just took place probably not that long ago, considering... Um, how big of a mess it is. They wouldn't leave it that long, would they? The place, as far as you can tell, is somewhat upkept. Again, this town of Pine Run is your middle of the middle of the ground, uh, tiny village. It's, there's nothing. It's not a city by any means. Like we said, we had the blacksmith. We have a tavern. We have a church. We have uh, the mayor's office. That's pretty much it. A few houses scattered here and there. So these are pretty hardy folk. And they're really enjoying themselves. Obviously, there's music and everything playing. And that is when you guys notice that there is a poster on the wall. Uh, well, it's about as good as a poster could be in these fantasy times uh, written up. And uh, it says, you know, tonight's show is featuring the famous bard Ed Eddie. Yeah, Eddie the Bard. That's when you guys notice on stage, indeed, there is an elven called Eddie the Bard, which is Jackass's character. What kind of name is Eddie for an elf? Well, it's short for Edrin, and I thought it would be really cool to call him Eddie the Bard. Like, he's this cool rock star. He actually got a really cool mini for him. It's one of the reasons why he picked him. Here, you see that? He's got this little loot behind him, behind his back. I don't know if you can see that. So yeah, that's, that's Eddie the Bard. It is Jackass's character. It's going to be joining your campaign uh, next session. So you guys have a little magic on your team now. I know that was bothering Dave. There was no magic users on your, our team. Uh, our campaign, obviously the campaign with Darren, we have Greg, who's a wizard. But, uh, yeah, aside from that, Darren's a cleric. Or a cleric. Exactly, that's only healing spells. So... You guys uh, are wandering around the bar, and Dave, I say Dave because he has the highest perception, notices an elf sitting at the bar, talking to a burly looking man. Okay, so you guys approach, and uh, it's clearly like the only elf that's here, so it's it must be all wrong. Okay, so he asks Elias, the, the elf says, yes, my name is Elrond. How may I be of assistance to you? Okay, no, my sister has gone missing as well. She is among the missing, and um, I'm actually heading out to go find her. And I don't have to pay. See, I was looking to recruit a team of people to go up there, but if you guys indeed are going up there, I will join you and offer my bow. So this is Elrond right here. This little elf ranger. He tells you that his sister Elsie has gone missing and she's been missing for two days after hunting. And she knows better than the hunt in Coolin Mountains by herself. So now Elrond is getting worried. The burly man, Elrond, uh, gives you guys attention to his name uh, Turkar, and Turkar is uh, somewhat worried, but not so much. He tells you guys that his stepson um, has gone missing as well. He is 21 years of age, and he has gone missing, and uh, he fears he is among one of the ones missing as well, and 
His girlfriend, the child's mother, is absolutely torn up about it. And he's actually offering a reward if you guys can uh, locate this child. Or man, I guess. It's not really a child. He will give you guys 50 gold if you can provide him uh, the whereabouts of the child. Or the man. <laughs> I keep calling him child. Man, child. Alive or dead. Hopefully alive. But, you know, Darren keeps to himself that he is aware that there's a displacer beast out there. And that the man is likely gone. But... Okay, so you guys are going to accept this mission, all right. He's a, okay, he is about 6'1 and blonde, um, much like his girlfriend, the, ch the man's mother. So that's all he can tell you, human as well, obviously. Okay, so uh, Dave, again, you have the highest perception. Can I get you to roll a perception check? I think, I think it's a six-sided dice. Yeah, six-sided dice. Just give me a six-sided dice roll. Okay, so that's going to do it. As you guys are standing there, uh, Dave kind of notices uh, the corner of his eye. Very hard to see because he's small. It's a halfling. There is a halfling uh, sitting at the far end of the bar with a massive flagon of meat. It means massive to him because he's a halfling. And he's been eyeballing Dave this entire time. So, Dave, what do you do? Okay, so you're going to approach him. Okay. Okay, so you approach this and you ask him, what is it? does he have a problem? He tells you he doesn't have a problem. But he has heard through the gossip in town that you guys are going after the bandits that took the artifact from the church. Okay. Yes. Okay, you're, you are telling him, yes, you indeed are the... Okay, so he tells you, I used to run with that group, and they actually recently threw me out. Well, let's just see. There are no honor among thieves, and that's all I'm going to say about that. I'll do you one better, friend. He says as he sips his massive flag of mead. I know where their camp is. Um, no. None of you have charisma high enough to try to... No, there's no way. You guys, maybe jackass. If he was here with Eddie? Maybe. But no, none of you have it. Okay. For 100 gold, I will take you directly to this camp. Hmm, not interested. It's a shame. I don't think you're gonna find this camp. Otherwise. My friends, I'm a thief. Gold means everything to me. So how about we compromise? For 20 gold, I will draw you a map. Talk it out, talk it out amongst yourselves. 20 gold, yep. You guys have 10 gold each right now, right? Because all the provisions you guys had to start, yeah, exactly, they're all, they're already prepaid for. So you guys all have 20 gold each. for a piece of parchment and a, pen, a quill which the bartender ob obliges and he draws you guys a map
Purple is a pretty, pretty crude map, but it's... It'll do. It'll get the job done. He tells you guys, there is a massive, massive, just north of the cornfield, there is a massive, massive pine fruit tree. You guys can't miss it. The reason you can't miss it is there's remnants of fires that are made there. A lot of the town folk and locals uh, go there. You know, guys, guys or girls take their girlfriends or boyfriends and uh, or girlfriends and girlfriends and you know it's like a make-up point. Yeah, not used so much now lately. In the last few months, obviously there's been something that's been killing people in this forest. But he tells you guys once you guys get there, make your way across the river. There is a massive pond, almost a mini lake, just south. But if you guys keep making your way east, you'll come to a waterfall. At the top of that waterfall is the camp, which they still use to this day. Um, because they, they're not afraid of what's in a forest. Uh, they're armed. Yes, there's a barbarian human, a human fighter, and... A human ranger just recently joined them as well. Wink, wink. Yes, so they are not afraid of that forest. It might be Marcus, it might not be. We don't know yet, we'll see. But he says this, this my friends, is where you'll find those bandits. So I'll leave that for you, Darren. You can take that. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't do well with threats. I'm a thief, not a fighter, but I will defend myself if I need to. He tells you, Dave, after you threaten him that if he's lying, you will cut his head off. Okay. So Elrond tells you guys he's not asking for a cut because his sister is the utmost importance. That's all he cares about. So he's coming for free with you guys. Yeah. Okay. Alaron says, it is quite late, the hour, and if what you say is true, there is a displacer beast out there. We are going to want to travel during the daytime and keep watch at night. We should probably travel in the morning. So you guys, there are, yes, there are rooms in this tavern. Okay, so you ask the bartender. The bartender tells you, yes, there are rooms here, and they are 20 silver a night. Okay. Okay, so you're all, uh, all single room, sorry. Unless you're gonna sleep head to toe or spoon, it's up to you guys. <laughs> okay, so you guys are all gonna get your own room. All right, make sure to subtract uh, 20 silver from all of your money. Okay. Yes, Ashley. Okay, so Ashley's looking to get some action. Uh, your tiefling fighter is a lesbian, I take it, or bisexual. Okay, bisexual, fair enough. Yes, the tavern wench tells you, yes, my services for the night are available. They are 20 silver per hour or one gold for the night. Uh, you know, you I probably should. It's funny, but I probably should give you a boost to something in the morning. Maybe a boost to your endurance. Um, if you take her for the whole night, yeah. Okay, we'll do that. So if you take her for the whole night, you will have a boost in performance the next day. I'll, we'll decide what exactly we're going to give you. Endurance, maybe not, because if you're going all night, you're not going to have much endurance, are you? <laughs> okay, so Ashley's taking a tavern wench to her room. Darren's retiring as well. Dave, you're staying up. You're going to watch Eddie the Bard for a bit? Okay, Elrond will join you and watch Eddie the Bard. And you guys will uh, spend the night here. You're grabbing a, a flag and a mead. Okay. Uh, five coppers for a mead. You're grabbing one as well? Okay. So you guys enjoy Eddie the Bard's show, he and Elrond. Elrond obviously bothered. His sister's still missing, and it's really weighing heavily on him. But okay. Skull? <sighs> Good beer. I mean mead. All right, so... Let's get on to the next day. Okay, so the next day you all wake up. 
nice, well-rested. Ashley, more than most, she had a really good night. Ashley, because you're a fighter and you guys are going to need it for this day, I will give you a plus one to strength just for the day. You go ahead and add that to your attributes. Well, you guys should have bought a tavern wench. She's the only one that bought one, so she gets the only one that gets the boost. <laughs> Sorry, you snooze, you lose, literally. So Elrond asks you all how you slept. He tells you that um, he didn't get much sleep. He's still quite worried about Elsie. And he is eager to get the journey started. So, yes, you guys start to make your way. Um, just as the thief... I just realized we didn't get a name from that thief. How are you going to find him, Dave? <laughs> so, that thief told you guys that it's north of the cornfield. You guys easily found the cornfield. It's massive. You meet some town folk along the way that warn you guys not to go too far into the forest up in the cool wind mountains as, you know, there's a, a creature that is taking people. Clearly you're all aware of this as it's part of a submission, side mission you guys are willing to take. Yeah. So after walking for hmm, maybe an hour, two hours, you guys do indeed find the pine fruit tree that uh, the thief <laughs> told you guys about. And it is, uh, it is massive. He was right. You guys couldn't have missed it. And you can indeed see old fire pits that have been made and put out and made again. But obviously it hasn't been made in a while. So what he says is true. A lot of people aren't venturing this far because of, you know, this creature. So you guys know, okay, we have to make our way east to this bandit camp. Uh, Elrond is keeping a strong lookout for trails of any kind as obviously he's only here to find his sister that's all he cares about he doesn't care about anything else he's not looking for thieves he's just coming along yeah so as you guys make your way east obviously the big creek is still there to the right you can't miss it and there is a slow moving river to your left uh up on the hills to your left there is this is still morning it's still kind of brisk you guys left quite early the sun is just coming up. Uh, up in the hills to your left, uh, I wouldn't say mountains, but I'd say big, massive hills. There's water coming over them. Think of like Iceland or Scotland, how those water in the, in the morning comes off if it's been raining. There's water coming up the top there, and that's what it looks like. Not quite a waterfall, but there's water trickling. You guys can faintly see what looks like maybe a potential forest fire. Like it's too big to be a bonfire. So that's something you guys keep note of. Yeah, you guys are noticing that. Okay. So as you guys are walking, like I said, river to your left, this massive creek to your right. Creek slash lake. It's not quite an ocean or not quite a massive big lake, but I would say a creek. You guys suddenly hear something coming out of the water. Okay, you're all ready in your, you're all ready in your swords. I wouldn't say you have to roll initiative just yet. Coming out of the water, uh, bigger than any you've ever seen in your life, is a massive, massive turtle. And he starts to come out and just walk up on land. Yeah, like I'm talking maybe a story tall. Not quite a dinosaur, but nearly. You guys gonna... Well, I mean, it doesn't seem aggressive. It's just kind of, okay, well, let's discuss. I mean, that's what you guys are a team for. Dave wants to butcher it. You guys do have reasonable rations. Like I said, yeah. You don't really need the food. Besides, I don't know if you want to eat a massive turtle flesh. How are you going to carry it and cook it? Unless you were to cook it right there. Well, up to you guys. What are you going to do? Okay. So as a vote, Marcus, you can't vote yet. You're not quite here. Dave, you've been out. You've been vetoed. Darren and Ashley don't want to kill this tortoise. So as Ashley predicted, it is actually docile. And it just walks on past. It was never going to attack anyway. So you would have murdered it for nothing, Dave. Yes. Yes, I know you have some chaotic in you, but 
again, like we've agreed at the beginning of the last session, you, this is going to be like a democracy that's group for deciding things. <laughs> Remember the last campaign when we go off and do our own thing? Yeah, bad things happen, so, okay. All right, so you guys keep following the river, just as the thief said. And indeed, there is a massive, massive waterfall. Not quite Niagara Falls. Not quite a massive waterfall to begin with. Like, I would say, hmm, maybe 40 feet wide. Yeah, eh, re reasonable. But it's, there's a steep climb to the top. There looks like there's no other way except maybe to use the ropes. Yes, Dave brought a rope with him. Okay, so. All right, so that's what we're doing. Okay, um, who's got the highest dexterity? Okay, Ashley, we're going to have you try to throw the rope up there. Yes, I know, you brought a grappling, gra grappling hook. Dave brought the rope. That was discussed. So try to throw the grappling hook up there. Um, mm, not a four-sided, that's two. Or one eight-sided dice. Yep, okay, go for it. Okay, so uh, that's a miss. The rope actually goes into the water and you're able to pull it back. It's not a critical fail, so <laughs> yeah, critical fail, you would have dropped it. So you can try it again, yeah, obviously, we got time. Elrond's annoyed, obviously, he wants to get up there. Okay. All right, okay, so you latched onto something. It seems pretty solid. I would say out of you, I think the heaviest is Darren. He's got the, that plate mail and everything on, right? Yeah, okay. So Darren, you should probably go up first to test the strength of the rope. You do have a really high strength as well, so. Okay, I got a number in mind uh, what's going to take to climb this rope. So everyone's going to roll a 20-sided dice, and they're going to go off their strength modifier. Okay. So everyone go ahead and roll. Start with you, Ashley. Okay, Darren. Okay, Dave. All right, so Darren and Ashley, you guys are able to scale up Dave. Like I said, it's going to be hard with Dave's uh, strength to climb it. So try it again, Dave. <laughs> okay, so a critical fail. <laughs> so in this scenario, I won't be too dickish because it's the very first time where, you know, obviously we're using the the dice rolls that have uh, repercussions. So you're going to roll a four-sided dice, Dave. Four-sided. Yeah, the little triangle. And uh, what happened is you climbed up halfway this rope and uh, you fell. So one to two, you fall and nothing happens. Three to four, you fall and something in the inventory breaks. Okay. Go ahead, roll it. <laughs> okay, so something breaks. <laughs> um, what's your what's in your inventory? Let me see. What's likely to break out of everything there? I think it's safe. Your skin, your water skin, that's gonna break. I would say not right now. You guys are surrounded by water. It wouldn't be too bad. Plus the other guys have skins as well. So yeah. So as you fall. water skin explodes you land on it no I'm not gonna make you take any damage or anything so go ahead and try to roll again to get back get up there uh, no Elrond's already up I didn't roll for Elrond I should have probably but he's up there already <sighs> okay so Obviously, this was an issue with picking a barbarian with that lowest strength. Um, you guys can. You can do that. Yes. So if you guys all come together and use your strength combined, you can lift Dave up. Dave, just you just got to hang on to the rope. I won't make you roll for that. So everybody roll a 20-sided dice. If you get anything uh, over 5, if you all get over 5, we'll just say you guys pulled up Dave. So... Go ahead and roll, Ashley. Okay. 
you both rolled over 20 so or over five so you guys lift dave up you're pulling dave up and he's coming up embarrassed obviously humiliated i would say <laughs> so what happens is when you guys come up uh this waterfall i would say it's there's a lot of brush cover you guys can smell a fire for sure yeah, okay so you guys yeah that's 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 the smart move i would too you guys sneak up to the sound of or smell of the fire as you guys get closer you notice that there's a bugbear sitting at the fire a massive bugbear and it looks like he's eating something yeah he's eating something uh, you guys see there's a human arm on a rotisserie above the fire so yeah he's eating somebody exactly um, just then Elrond screams out I'll say no and the bugbear turns to face you guys and uh, what you see is the bugbear is holding a female elfin's head in his hand during this feast this is actually pretty funny I actually thought about this and I actually have one <laughs> and he holds it up right there bugbear he's got the head in his arm here in his hand <laughs> so this is what you guys see he gets up with a large grunt and then he roars at you guys and he comes charging um they're like a they're half bear and uh like half orc i think i can't remember darren do you know what the bugbears actually are no okay yeah they're like big bear orcs basically it's about the size of an orc it's pretty big don't worry it should it'll be all right Okay, so he approaches you guys. Now we're gonna roll initiative because this is gonna be a fight, okay? All right, so everyone roll, Ashley. Okay. Okay, Dave. All right, I gotta roll two. Okay, so Ashley goes first, and then me, uh, then Darren, then Dave. So that's what's gonna happen. So first off, uh, Elrond draws his bow and he shoots it at the bugbear. And it's a miss. Okay, now, Ashley, it's your go. What do you do? Okay, so you're going to swing him with your axe. All right, go ahead and roll. Okay, uh, yep, that's a hit. Go ahead and roll for damage. Get your seven-sided dice. You have any modifiers for that? Well, you do have a strength modifier as well, so we'll give you one tick of damage more. Okay, yep, so that is a hit. I should have been writing who's going first, actually. My bad. Okay, so as Ashley hits the bugbear, he kind of like just kind of grunts it off. Okay. <laughs> Now my bugbear goes. Um, so I'm gonna roll four-sided dice and decide who I'm gonna attack here out of the four of you. Okay, so I'm attacking Dave. What's your armor? All right, so that's a miss. That's a miss for me. Okay, now Darren, it's your go. Okay, uh, that's a miss. So you swing and you miss. Now, Dave. Okay. Yep, that's a hit. Roll for damage. Okay, three points of damage. So you do three points of damage. So Dave hits him in a rib with his axe. And he kind of just grabs you know, Dave's axe head and rips the axe out. Like, <laughs> he's tough, I told you. Like, he just kind of shakes it off, right? All right, so we're back again. Uh, Ashley, your go. 
Um, that is a miss. Okay, so my go. I'm gonna roll my four sided dice again. Okay, I'm aiming at Darren now. What's your armor class? Okay, that's a miss. So I miss Darren too. All right, uh, Darren, you're go now. Oh no. <laughs> so you rolled a one. Okay, so based on the board, you're right next to Dave. What I'm gonna do is, you're gonna roll a four-sided dice. On the two, you drop your mace. Three to four, you strike Dave. <laughs> okay, so go ahead and roll. Okay, so you're striking Dave. <laughs> so roll for damage, yet regular damage. Okay, oh my goodness, that's a lot of... Oof. Okay, yeah, Dave, you take minus five. Oof, that hurt. Okay, Dave, here you go. That's a miss. Okay, we're back again. Ashley, here you go. Uh, that is a hit. Okay, roll for damage. Ooh. Okay, so now the bugbears, he's like wobbling. Like that hit actually hurt him, Ashley's hit. Like he's ooh. not quite finished me or finish him for Mortal Kombat, but almost there. Like he's, he's hurting. Okay, my go. I'm aiming at Dave. <laughs> okay. All right, what's your armor class? Okay, that's a hit. I gotta roll for damage. Oh, man. How much health? Okay, so that is six points of damage. So Dave is officially down. The bugbear downed him. Okay, so Dave is down. So Dave doesn't get to go. It goes back to Ashley now. <laughs> okay, Ashley, go ahead and roll. Ooh, that is a miss. Okay. Uh, okay, so one to two is going to be Ashley. Three to four is going to be Darren. I'm going to roll a four-sided dice again. Okay, I'm attacking Ashley. Okay, no, that's a miss. Darren, go ahead, your go. Okay, that's a hit. Don't even bother rolling damage. Okay, so Darren winds up with a backhand and he smacks the bugbear across the face. The two bugbear fangs that are from the bottom go flying off. The bugbear drops. The bugbear is dead. He actually falls a little bit on top of the fire. A little bit of his hair is getting singed from the fire. So you guys have slain the bugbear. You know what I really Elron. Let's just say Elron missed all our shots. Completely forgot about Elron. <laughs> I know Dave might not be down right now. <laughs> we didn't forget about Elron. <laughs> okay, but it's fine. Dave's going to recover, so everything's all good. You guys like, help Dave up, and he's back to his feet. Dave, what's your hit points at? Okay, we'll go up to half. Half your hit points for now. Yep. Uh, I don't think any of you have healing potions. I don't think... No, just half for now. You, again, if you guys sp decide to spend a night here at this fire, I don't know what's going to happen, though. Uh, I'll let you fully heal. Okay. So you guys get all this done. Uh, Bugbear slain. Um, you guys hear rustling coming from the bush nearby. Like, nearby the fire, slowly down the hill. You guys hear rustling. So what do you do? Okay, so you all draw your weapons. Dave, you probably shouldn't throw a throwing axe in this bush. You don't know what's in there. I'm just saying, it's up to you. You're going to throw, okay. Okay, so roll a dice. Okay, so Dave threw his throwing axe into the bush. Um, Marcus, roll for damage. <laughs> Marcus is in the bush. <laughs> well, I told you to wait, my guy. Okay. 
Marcus, roll for damage. I'm sorry. This is not off to a good start. Okay, two points of damage. It's not too bad. So as Dave, you throw your throwing axe, you hear like a man scream out in pain. You guys approach this bush, and you find Marcus hogtied in that bush. Now, Marcus, you are going to roll a four-sided dice. One to two. You're completely bare-assed, stripped naked. Three to four, you're marked by the bugbears. Marked as in urinated on, inseminated on, whatever it may be. Not, no, they didn't violate you, they just marked you. Okay, if Dave, you want to call it a Bukaki Dave, we'll call it that. But you got marked regardless, a bugbear marking. <laughs> so, <laughs> Dave said it, not me. Okay, go ahead and roll it. Okay, so you're marked. Well, we'll say urine, okay? Just, just to shut Dave up, we'll say urine. <laughs> so, Darren, you go up to Marcus and you go to help him up. And as you help him up, after you cut him loose, you're kind of like, ugh. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's disgusting. Okay, so Marcus, aka the Ranger. a human ranger now he tells you guys thank you for saving me so much uh, these bugbears came across our camp last night and uh, they ambushed it um, or yesterday sorry we they spent the night here they kept me alive uh, they killed everyone else in the party you guys notice there is a dead human barbarian um, hanging in not far nearby this is the one that the thief told you guys about and uh, he tells you that you know they they took the other one and they or sorry the other one they ate they also ate a female elf uh, as you guys notice Elrond weeping uh, next to the fire as he places his sister's head into a sack Elsie's head into a sack and then the weirdest thing happened last night, Marcus tells you. Um, in the middle of the night, a giant came th through the camp, and he grabbed the chest that we had stolen, and he ran off with it. Two of the bugbears pursued. Uh, this bugbear you guys just defeated was uh, tasked with watching over me. Um, they didn't kill me. They wanted me for something. I don't know what it is, but they were... They were not going to kill me. I don't know what it was. Yes, okay. So this is what he tells you. So yes, a giant did indeed, and he went off somewhere west. No, not below the waterfall, not in, not below the ridge, but just off in that, that direction. Yes, exactly. That fire you guys had seen, it could be in that direction. That's a good call. Okay. So Elrond tells you guys as he places his sister's head into a sack that, you know, this is as far as he comes. He thanks you guys for helping him. You guys offer your condolences to his sister. And he tells you guys now he's heading home to his elf lands to bring his sister's head to Barry. And, uh, he takes off. Darren, you also notice among the pile of body parts that are cooking there that there is quite a bit of blonde hair and a blue tunic with a little sigil on the arm yeah you think maybe this is the lost stepson of that man Tugar yeah okay yes good idea you're gonna cut the sigil off it could be a sigil or some kind of uh, maybe he was a part of an order or some kind and you guys can give it back to him and that could be confirmation that he was killed by these bugbears no, no sign of this this creature yet, so. Okay, so you're going to make your way uh, toward the direction of the giant. Yes, that's a good good idea, because he did take that chest from these bugbears, from the thieves. Marcus feels him, uh, the need to tell you guys that he actually is not a thief. He is an undercover ranger from the town of Anvil, which is north of Pine Run. It's a bigger town, nearly a city. And he was tasked with taking down this thief group 
that is notorious throughout this entire region. And he went undercover to infiltrate them, and he was a part of um, their dealing with that chest. But he tells you guys, um, the chest is gold. There's gold in that chest. It's not an artifact. Indeed, there is gold. There, he's, he's sure of it. They met with that priest, Jaxar, and he told them that uh, they were to take that chest and they were all going to split that gold. So Jaxar lied to you guys. Yes, there's no artifact, there never was. He told the people of Pine Run that there was an artifact in that chest when indeed that is just all the money he's been pillaging from the people of Pine Run through donations. And he wanted to uh, get rid of it all and split it with this thief group. Yes, this is why he never ever asked uh, for your help. The town folk did because they were sure this was a religious artifact from their their church and their god that was taken, but it wasn't. In fact, it wasn't even taken. Jaxar worked with these thieves, according to Marcus. Yes. Okay, so vengeance is going to be on your mind when you get back. Okay. But you should retrieve the chest. There is a lot of gold in there. Marcus tells you guys more gold than he was willing to pay us. We can all split it and then deal with him as we see fit. Okay, so you guys are going to make your way back east. You're going to stay on top. Yeah, you're going to stay on top of the hill, not go back down to Waterfall. Okay, smart move. So, as you guys make your way east, so good. As you guys make your way east, Follow along this, it was what you guys expected. Bodies of water that are at the edge of this hill that are pouring over the side to look like mini waterfalls. And it's a chain that's attached to a, a running river system. You guys come across and there's a rickety old bridge that crosses over it. Mm -hmm. And that's along a path that you guys can hear what sounds like steel clinging way off in the distance, further east. I'm going to get you, Dave, to roll a perception check. Just roll it and see what happens. Okay, so, as you guys cross this river, um, no, it's not a troll, Dave. Dave kind of notices in his peripheral vision off to his left in the water there is a gold shimmer coming out of the water like a point um, hang on. that's a terrible drawing but like that's the waves and uh, there's a point sticking out that is golden and it is shining. It is golden, yes, 100%. I don't know, what could it be? That could be. I mean, it's gold, it's clearly gold. Could be a weapon, could be something. It's up to you guys. So you want to go out and investigate. Alright, so you're very paranoid. You don't want to just swim out there. So Dave is the smallest one of you all. Like physically and weight wise, he's the smallest. Yeah. So if you want, um, you could tie a rope around Dave. You are? Okay. So you're going to tie a rope around Dave, and he's going to swim out to this gold piece just in case something happens. You guys are going to pull him in. You guys are really paranoid? All right. Could be nothing. Okay, so this is the plan. All right. 
Well, you should probably take off your armor. It's up to you, but it's going to weigh you down. You don't have a high strength, right? Okay, so you shed your armor. You have this rope tied around your waist. You're going to swim out toward what this gold piece is. And I won't even make you do checks. You just go ahead and swim out to it. So as Dave's swimming out, Marcus, Ashley, and Darren, you guys are holding onto the rope, feeding it for him as he's going out. Dave, as you get closer, you realize that it's like the corner of like a ruin, like an old pillar or something, and it, it is gold. The gold underneath the water is kind of fading. It's got uh, like algae on it and everything, but this gold piece sticking out, it's pretty shiny. So you're gonna try to cut it off. Okay, you, you do have your two throwing knives, throwing axes. We didn't even see if you retrieve, retrieved the one that you hit Marcus with. Okay, so roll a strength. Okay, no, you're gonna roll again. No, I'm looking for at least, in your situation, you have to get over 12 or 13. I know, because your strength is so low. While you're doing this, you guys notice what looked like a log this entire time has actually moved towards Dave. So what do you guys do? Okay, you're going to start to pull the rope to pull Dave back in. So as you guys are doing this, a massive, massive, the size of like Lake Placid crocodile comes out of the water. You guys thought it was a log this whole time. Like that's how well it was hidden. That's why even Dave's perception check couldn't see it. You guys are pulling really fast to try to get Dave back. So as you guys are pulling, this thing comes up and it bites the rope. <laughs> yeah, like. So it's like, yes, it's like they're like deep blue sea alligators instead of sharks. That's how smart they are. <laughs> so, okay. So Dave, um, the alligator's going to roll to attack you, okay? <laughs> While you're in the water, which is going to be really easy to do. So I'm going to do a roll. You guys didn't spend a night, so you still only have your 6 HP or hit points. So that's a hit. Okay, only two points of damage, so it's two points of damage. Okay, so what are we doing here? All right, yes, Ashley does have extra rope. That's the only rope you guys have left, though. So, Ashley, you're going to throw it out to him. So, throwing it out to him, I would, uh, Dave's about five yards out. It would probably be best if you tied your grappling hook to it for weight. It would go further. Okay. That's what, so again, dexterity, go ahead, roll. Okay, so it reaches Dave. Dave grabs onto it, you guys start to pull back in. Um, Dave, roll a, roll a 20 sided dice. I wanna see how quickly I can get you out of this, uh, get you out of this water. <laughs> okay, so we're not even gonna go over the repercussions of you rolling one, he, one of your axes falls out of your, you have your two axes, one of your axes, axes falls out of your pouch. Yeah, that's all we're going to do. That's it. So, okay, so you guys pull Dave on the shore. He's finally on the shore, out of the water. It looks like this uh, alligator has gone. Dave tried to throw his axe at it, or hit it with his axe, and he dropped it. It's, yeah, he rolled a one. Um, just as you guys are up on land, two more crocodiles come out on either side of you guys. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. That's it, it's over. The, the alligator experience is over. He didn't, yeah, I'm just fucking with you guys. Okay, so, you guys decide you're leaving. Yeah, fuck those alligators. <laughs> Dave, before you guys go, you notice at the edge of the water, um, is your throwing axe. What, and you're just gonna leave it? <laughs> okay, so Dave's just gonna leave his throwing axe. <laughs> All right, so you guys continue to make your way towards the sound of this clinging metal. Um, it's getting fairly obvious as you guys get closer that there's a fight happening, for sure. 
you actually hear screaming and roaring. Um, as you guys come across this clearing, you come through the brush, and what you see is this massive, massive giant with a boulder to defend himself is smashing his boulder towards two very, very burly bugbears. They're fighting this giant. And uh, you can see the chest, which is cracked open right behind him. What do you guys do? You don't know. Giants generally are not friendly, but you guys don't know. Okay, so Ashley's thinking of trying to help the giant. Dave? Dave's thinking, okay, Dave. Marcus, what about you? Okay. Darren? Okay, so you guys are going to you're gonna help the giant fight the two bugbears. All right, sounds fair. Okay, so uh, from this distance, we're gonna let Marcus uh, shoot his bow. Yeah, before we even roll a sneak attack, because I'll give you guys one of the bugbears back is turned. So Marcus gets a an attack oppor uh, opportunity of attack, as you guys know in Dungeons and Dragons it happens. So Marcus, go ahead and roll your twenty sided dice. Okay, that's a hit. I gotta put these bugbears on here, actually. And bugbears, where are we? I'll give them this much hit points. Okay, Marcus, go ahead and roll damage. Okay. So the one bugbear that uh, Marcus shoots at, it, obviously the one closest to you is who you aimed at, yeah. Marcus hits him in the back with a, with a bow, an arrow. And his bugbear just drops like he was close to death. He falls face down. And he's got the arrow on the back. The other bugbear turns to look towards you guys. And the giant who's got the boulder over his head kind of looks over you guys too. Like, what the fuck's going on here? But it didn't make a sound. Uh, the bugbear rushes you guys. Everyone roll initiation. Including me, I guess. Marcus, Darren, Dave. okay, so I actually go first, I got the highest number, and then Darren, Dave, and Ashley, and Marcus, okay, so my bugbear is going to push out further, and I'm going to go towards, I have to roll a six-sided dice now, uh, one's Darren, two's Marcus, three's Dave, four's Ashley, five is Giant. No, I'm getting rid of the Giant because I'm not, uh, I'm moving out towards one of you guys, so. Let's just roll, I guess, you don't know, I'm going to roll a four-sided dice. Okay, so I push out towards Darren. And let me see. Miss. That's a miss for sure. Okay. Okay, Darren, your go. Okay, you are attacking the bugbear for sure. Okay. So go ahead and roll. Uh, that is a hit. Roll for damage. Okay, yeah. So this bugbear is already breathing heavy when Darren strikes it with his mace. Like he's. <sighs> He's been fighting for quite some time, obviously. He's been fighting a giant. Dave? That's a miss. Okay, Ashley? That's a miss as well. Ooh, you guys. And Marcus. Okay, that's a hit. Roll damage, Marcus. Okay. So Marcus hits him with his bow again. Like right in the gut. He's kind of, he's staggering. He's, oh, oh, oh. Now, the bugbear turned his back towards the giant. 
from what the giant does. I don't even have to go through damage because his bugbear was nearly dead already. The giant picks up that big boulder he has and he cracks it over the top of the bugbear's head and that bugbear's head blows up. The bugbear drops to the ground. Now the giant quickly picks up his rock again and he looks at you guys and he starts to breathe heavy wondering what he's going to do with you guys. He's got his big rock. He's breathing heavy. And he's looking down at his chest. You know, that chest of gold. And he's looking back at you guys. He kind of knows you guys are here for this. What do you guys do? Okay, so Dave's willing to just leave the gold and go and kill Jaxar for betraying you guys. Marcus? Ashley? Okay. Is there kind of an agreement? Agreeance, Darren, and you vetoed already for going by votes, so you too as well. So what you guys do is uh, you kind of lower your weapons, and that giant's kind of like, and then he slowly lowers his boulder. Now just then, again, there's that that water body of water that's always to your guys' left on top of this hill. Out of the water, like Chuck Norris and missing an action is Elrond. He comes out covered like dripping water and he has his bow drawn and he screams out to you guys I got you guys and he lets loose a uh, arrow and it strikes the giant in the back and the giant screams oh. everyone roll initiative now <laughs> blame Elrond Okay, so everyone roll initiative. Okay. okay. I'll roll as well for the giant. Okay, so this one goes Dave, Marcus, Ashley, Darren, and me. I actually roll last, so. Now, oh, I'll add Elrond on there as well. Okay, so... I gotta roll for Elrond. Okay, Elrond actually goes first, so I'll roll for Elrond. I miss. I should say I'm still in the water. I'm trying to shoot my bow, so I should swoop to the rapier. Okay, now, uh, Dave, your go. Okay, that's a hit. Roll for damage. Okay. So, when... The axe, okay. So you swing this axe, you hit him in the leg, and he just kind of looks down at you and looks back up like... <laughs> it's a giant, Dave. Okay, Ashley, your go. Go ahead and roll. Okay, that is a miss. And Darren. Yep, that's a hit. Go ahead and roll for damage. Okay. Basically the same thing. Your mace does nothing. It essentially bounces off of them. Yeah, and like I said, it's a giant. Okay, now Marcus, your go. With your bow. Okay, that's a miss. Okay, so the giant... is going to aim at Ashley. It's a hit. Damage. Okay, Ashley, you're down. That was actually 10 points of damage. <laughs> what? Just calm down. Calm down, Dave. So Ashley's down. Okay, so once again, we're going back around. It's Elrond's turn. So with Elrond, I'm going to use my turn, or Elrond's turn, to get a little closer to this giant. So Elrond moves in uh, to melee range so we can attack him with his rapier. It's his bow... Uh, striking with this giant is a little too much, so that's Elrond's turn. Okay, now, Dave, here you go. Go ahead and roll. Okay, that's a hit. Damage. Okay. So that kind of hurt him a little bit. 
I kind of did a little bit of a low scream, more, more of a low grumble. Yeah. Okay, Darren, here you go. That is a miss. Now it is the giant's turn. He is aiming at Darren. That's a hit. I don't think it matters what I roll here. <laughs> yeah, Darren's down. <laughs> okay, so um, the giants go. Or sorry, no, the giants go. Jesus, Darren, you're down already. We're going back around. So uh, Elrond's turn again. So Elrond's gonna try to hit this giant. Missed again. Okay, Dave, it's you up to you and Elrond. Okay, that's a miss. All right, now it's the giant's turn. So you have four-sided dice, one to two, you, three to four, Elrond. It's Elrond, he's aiming it. That's a hit. Okay, so what happens is he turns and looks towards Elrond, and he grabs Elrond by the top of his head, which is like this for him top of Elrond's head. He picks Elrond up and he grabs Elrond by the feet and he pulls Elrond's feet out from underneath him and he's only holding Elrond's head. Elrond's dead. And he bites into Elrond's head. One single bite, half of Elrond's head's gone and he's chewing on it. Okay. Your turn, Dave. Okay. I don't think there's anything you can do. So if you turn and you run, this giant is going to get an attack opportunity. Or you can fight him. You don't care, you're gonna try to run? Okay, so you try to run. Yeah, he, he hit you. So he swats you, you go flying, you hit a tree. You're down too. Okay, no, it's not over. You guys aren't over, the game's not over yet. Like, the campaign's not just done. So you guys have all been knocked out. As you guys wake up, or sorry, many, many hours have passed by, Everyone roll a 20-sided dice for me. Actually, okay, Arcus, a good roll. There. Dave. Okay, so it's Marcus. So Marcus kind of comes to, um, he's half out of it. He slowly wakes up and uh, realizes where he is. It is now closer towards dusk, like the sun's going down. That fire you guys thought you seen in a hill when you guys first entered the forest is actually a massive bonfire which for this giant is just a regular sized fire so uh yeah he's cooking right now you guys can see there's a the, one of the bugbears that you guys killed there's a pole going up his ass and out his mouth and he is on top of the fire completely stripped like his fur is gone, it's just all muscle, he's cooking. It actually smells quite nice. And you look over and his back's towards you and he's actually peeling the fur off of the other bugbear. Like he's peeling it off. And that's when you notice that this giant's fur around his body is actually bugbear fur. So he probably kills these bugbears quite a bit. Um, so what do you do? No, he hasn't noticed you yet. It's up to you. you. Try to sneak away. To sneak off three of them, it would take some time after a while. Yeah. Ballsy play, but I like it. Okay, you're gonna shoot, shoot him. All right. Wow, good roll, good roll. So Marcus hits a natural 20. Don't even worry about the damage because this is perfect the way this is supposed to play out, or it should, somewhat. Marcus gets up, grabs his bow, draws his arrow back, he lets go. It strikes this giant right behind the head, comes out the front, taking its eye with it. And the giant drops. He's dead. Marcus slayed the giant. Golf clap, round of applause. Yes. 
Okay, so eventually you all start to slowly wake up. You guys have fresh bugbear meat to eat. And yeah, it's like any other bear. You guys can eat it. Yes, okay, that's a good, a good choice. Spend the night there. Get everyone's health back, back up to normal, which a night's rest will do. The chest is there. And uh, Marcus wasn't lying. There is 800 gold in that chest that you guys can choose to do whatever with. Keep it for yourselves. Go back to town and give it back to the townsfolk. It's up to you guys what you're going to do with this chest of gold. But that's going to be it for this session. Yeah. No, that's going to be it for this this session of this uh, Dungeons and Dragons. It was fun, man. I finished my beer. Obviously, the food was good. The company's good as well. <laughs> yeah, it was. Oh, so many funny things. Yeah. Well, I think we're going to be doing Darren's campaign uh, next time because I want to kind of flip flop it. I don't want it to always be mine. Yeah, so we can do that as well for sure. No, this was fun, man, for sure. I can't wait to get together with you guys again. You guys enjoyed it. It's a different campaign than most. Like I said, it's more story driven. Like I'm, you guys are playing my hellscape basically. I know Dave hates it, but okay. All right, well, let's just get packed up and uh, I'll head to bed, and I'll see you guys at work tomorrow. All right, let's get everything packed up here then. Yeah.